Welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast featuring stellar conversations with emerging and established Wickedly Smart Women. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate the Wickedly Smart Women who are committed, care deeply, and have the courage to take action and create change all around the world. Now here's your host, Emerald Green Forest. Welcome to another episode of the Wickedly Smart Women podcast, where we celebrate wickedly smart women and provide our listeners with a wealth of wisdom along with immediately actionable steps to be smarter, spunkier, and more successful in their impact and their leadership. This is your host, Emerald Greenforest, and today we welcome our special guest, Joy Idris. So Joy is the author of Joy Unleashed, Delightfully Navigating the Path of Conscious Awareness. Joy talks about how she healed a lifetime of trauma, chronic illness, and pain in one weekend. It unleashed so much joy and freedom, it fired a passion in her to show how everyone else can do the same. An inner journey practitioner, intuitive, spiritual teacher, and guide for many years, it is her sheer delight to show people how they can easily and rapidly heal and unleash their true joy and well-being, often where conventional methods seem to fail. So welcome, Joy. I'm so excited that you're here on the show. Uh, Before we got started, Joy mentioned that she's been connected with my body of work for the last decade. So uh, this is the first time we're actually having an in-depth conversation with one another, and I'm so grateful that you're here and delighted to uh, welcome you to the show. Yeah, it's it's really great to finally get to meet you face to face at last. (laughs) Yeah, beautiful. So let's start, Joy, with, you know, you've got a really powerful story here. So I want to start with what happened for you in that one weekend? Like something, something big actually must have happened in that one weekend. So can you talk about that? It certainly did. And You know, when you reach the end of your tether and you've tried so many things to get well or to get over your uh, challenges and nothing really seems to work more than a short temporary, you know, uh, relief from time to time. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this healing retreat weekend that I'd come across. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to crawl into a corner, withdraw from the world, and that's it. I'm just not going to engage at all. You know, I was in so much pain. I'd been suffering chronic fatigue for about six years by that time, to such an extent that I was crawling from room to room to be able to get anywhere. I couldn't really walk. And I'd been through so much suffering in my life. It all kind of came to a head. My body was saying, you are not going anywhere unless you deal with this woman. So I thought, you know, I need to try this. This is my last ditch attempt. And and so I went. In fact, I didn't want to go because it cost so much, but I, <laughs> I decided this was one time I'm going to actually pay for the healing. And it was an amazing weekend. What it is, is a guided inner journey process, like a meditative process. You actually have your eyes closed all the way through. In fact, we did two processes through the weekend and lots of meditation to get really deeply relaxed and and connected to our bodies because it's, you know, really about connecting to your body wisdom. And in those journeys, I connected to memories that, I mean, I knew about the memories, but I connected in a way it was like they were being lifted out of my cells and being addressed completely and utterly for the first time ever, you know. Everything I hadn't said when I was younger got to be said. You have an imaginary conversation with the people that are involved in those traumatic circumstances. And so I emptied everything and and I came to completion. And when you come to completion, you come to forgiveness and letting go and, you know, everything gets emptied out of yourselves. And then you replenish yourselves with resources that would help you if ever you came across anything that might trigger that old behavior. So, you know, it's filling up with resources of self-love, self-compassion, understanding the bigger picture, you know, these kind of things. And this was where the magic happened. I came out of that weekend laughing, singing, dancing. Can you believe dancing after just crawling from room to room only the day before? And my son was 10 by this time. And when I came out, he saw me and went, ooh, 
I like the new mummy. <laughs> <laughs> That was so precious to hear those words after all the years of depression and pain and, you know, being withdrawn as well, you know. It was yeah. bad, absolutely. Well, you know, you said something really important there that I just want to pull right to the surface because, you know, I know a lot of people in the healing community. I have been a healer myself. I know that you do healing work. And... Uh, one thing that you said in there was you actually paid for the healing. So I want to hear a little bit about maybe your mindset before this happened in relationship to investing in your own healing, which I think is what causes so many people to not get the healing that they need is they don't they don't feel that they're worthy or that they don't feel that, you know, that the investment is going to be commensurate with the results or whatever it is that they have going on in their relationship with money and themselves, their own valuing of themselves. So can you talk a little bit maybe about your mindset before uh, you went into this and then, you know, now how you feel about money being exchanged in really appropriate amounts, like really appropriate amounts for mm. life-changing healing. Yeah, that's so important. You know, before I uh, came to this retreat, my self-worth was so low, it was underground. <laughs> I didn't have any self-worth. In fact, I didn't even know who I was. And this came about, you know, from the past when through trauma, uh, I decided I needed to hide myself and then I set about working out what people wanted in order to be safe. And then I became like a chameleon, you know, be this character, that character, the other character. And I was so invested in those characters that there was nothing left for me to connect with myself. It was like everybody else is more important than me. And, you know, I would have happily paid for somebody else to go, which is really quite interesting. But when it came to me, it was like, whoa, you know, that's this very, you know, expensive. But that was, I suppose, a turning point for me too, because it gave me the message that I was worth investing in, you know. And, and in fact, in that weekend, I got in touch with my true self and my true self-worth. And afterwards, I practiced connecting to my self-worth. So it wasn't, even though I was, you know, completely and miraculously healed in that one weekend from the chronic pain and, and fatigue and depression and all of that, there was still some work to be done. Mm -hmm. And this work about self-worth was definitely one of those where I would do things that, you know, where you feel selfish but do it anyway, <laughs> you know, <laughs> those kind of practices where you're kind of setting up boundaries for yourself, which for me I'd never done before. And, and the, f the fear of rejection would come up, the fear of criticism, which is, you know, what I would try to avoid before. But with each step that I took, I got stronger and stronger and stronger. And then I realized, you know, that actually, you know, we all deserve to have what is best for us. And I found also the commitment of investing in myself brought about better the results than if it had been free. You know, I think there's something about investing in yourself where you're committing to something. You're going to make sure that you're going to try your best to make it happen, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I really think that's very important, very important. Beautiful. Well, what I'm hearing there is it was a point in time where you made a decision to actually invest at a a high rate in yourself. But beyond the investment, there was still work to be done. And that, you know, you're still maybe still possibly spending time strengthening your own self worth muscle. So, can you talk about you've written a book, you've got your own body of work that you're putting out there? Can you talk a little bit about how you're showing up in the marketplace and commanding? appropriate amounts of investment from the people that work with you and you know maybe what processes you do internally to help yourself stand strong and powerful and clear and magnetic commanding to the cash flow that is a commensurate with the level of work that you do yeah for me i do a lot of uh, work on opening to abundance and ease particularly ease because 
I had a history of struggle. So there was, you know, for me, that's a good practice too. And, and also boundaries. And I have set the level of what I want to charge. And I'm quite happy with the value that I offer for that. And sometimes people need to be educated about it you know, because they need to understand the value. For example, you know, one session with me is equal to about a year's worth of psychotherapy. So, you know, if someone understands that, you know, if they're going to spend on psychotherapy once a week or once a month for a year, my service actually represents an amazing value for them, you know, because the work that I do is transformative, life transformative, it's miraculous. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's not something where you're just going to feel a little bit better for a day or two, but it's actually, it transforms your life in such a way that you can't go back to the old way of being. Mm. So, I mean, this is, you know, of amazing value. And, and I believe in that in myself, in the work that I do, in the results that I've had for myself, and in the results that I've had with my clients, you know, that the more results I have, the more convinced I am about, you know, how wonderful this is. And I'm also convinced that people need to really commit and invest in themselves to such a level that they are uh, willing to really take these things. I wouldn't say seriously, because I think seriousness is a disease of the ego. <laughs> <laughs> but to take these things as something that's very important for their own happiness and, and, and joy and sense of well-being, what could be more important than that? Great question. What could be more important than your own sense of joy, happiness, and well-being? Well, that is a perfect spot to have a little pause. We are going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to let everyone know where you can find out more about joy. But for now, I just want to thank all of our listeners who are downloading, rating, and reviewing. Uh, we are welcoming thousands and thousands and millions and millions of listeners and downloads from all over the world. And I want to shout out this week to our listeners in the UK, because that's where Joy is. So hello, listeners in the UK, and uh, welcome to the Wickedly Smart Women podcast. We will be right back with Joy Idris in just a moment. The Wickedly Smart Women podcast is brought to you by the Creative Age Consulting Group. Women, are you ready for a big revenue breakthrough so you can stop working like a man and being paid like a woman? Are you ready to take the leap and go deep to claim your value and convert your wisdom to wealth? Is now the time to fulfill your mission and change the world? Creative Age Consulting Group is hired by women just like you who want to break through to their brilliance and be heard by millions while building a sustainable business model that makes bank. Please visit apply.wealthylifemethod.com to apply for an invitation-only consultation. If you have been inspired to receive support in welcoming wealth by making your most heartfelt contribution to the world, be sure to apply for a consultation today. Once again, that is apply.wealthylifemethod.com or click in the link in the show notes to access the application. And we are back with Joy Idris. Uh, Joy, as I said at the top, is the author of Joy Unleashed, Delightfully Navigating the Path of Conscious Awareness. And you can find out more about Joy and her body of work at truly transformational.co.uk. We will have that information for you in the show notes. I want to talk now, Joy. We, you know, before we came to the break, we were talking about money and the relationship with money and being a businesswoman. I mean, obviously you're a wickedly smart woman. And you also mentioned boundaries and using boundaries for setting your rates and taking a stand for your own self and your own business and your body of work in the marketplace. So I would like to have you talk about boundaries because I think women in particular are essentially moving through the world, uh, most of them from the heart. And sometimes wickedly smart women are actually, you know, kind of disengaging from the heart and moving through the world from their head. So can we talk a little bit about how to be a heartful joyful, giving, loving, kind, generous, nurturing, peaceful human being, and also have the clarity of 
of mind and intent to have boundaries around what is acceptable and what's not. Can you talk a little bit about that? I think it really starts with working on yourself until you are able to fill yourself up with so much happiness and joy and openness to abundance and receiving that it becomes natural to let it flow outwards. And then you are approaching potential clients and people, whoever you are relating with, from clarity because those places of joy and abundance and happiness and light are automatically connected with clarity. It becomes easy to set boundaries because you understand the value of what's here. You don't have to work hard at it. It's almost like you're caring so much for the other people because you care so much about yourself that you are offering them what's best for them in the whole picture of what they need to address in themselves. So, you know, they may, might need to understand that not wanting to invest is a self-worth issue for them, for example, you know. So maybe there's some education that needs to go on in order for them to understand because they're not in the same place as you because you're wanting to bring them to that place. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it helps also to have lots of evidence, you know, to show people how these things have worked through and how people have benefited and um, what value they have got from these things. I think you stand solid in your ground, knowing who you are and what you're here to offer and the value of what you are, you have. And then obviously some people will be magnetized to that and there'll be no issue. Uh, other people will be magnetized, but they still have their own issues that you can help them with maybe in a consultation, you know, where you can talk about typical resistances that might come up and how people can get through that. Beautiful. Well, the two main things I heard there were education and evidence are helpful in setting and maintaining those clear boundaries and then knowing your own worth and moving from a place of fullness and overflow and that actually just creates the natural boundary. <laughs> it's not really even, you don't even have to think about a boundary when you're moving from a place of, of your own fullness and your own overflow. Am I clear in what's That's here? Right. Yeah, okay, great. You know, it's also recognizing that the people will be magnetized to you who are meant to come to you and it's trusting in that flow and that process. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not about, you know, trying to go out there and grab people. <laughs> you know, it's, it's more a case of, here I am, this is what I have to offer, and the divine will send to me the people who need to hear this message in my particular way. Beautiful. So what I'm hearing there is also a cultivation of trust in the universe itself to actually provide and facilitate the connections. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, for sure. Yeah. And so trust through noticing and appreciating lots of evidences that come your way. Beautiful. So do you have any, um, besides noticing and appreciating, thank you, I was going to ask for an immediately actionable step for people. Do you have any other immediately actionable steps for our listeners besides noticing and appreciating evidence that comes your way that actually will help them to more fully embrace their own capacity to trust and strengthen that capacity to trust even further? Yeah. First of all, I think what needs to be addressed is the way that we cover up our capacity to trust by the characters that we play out, which are very often based on fear. So once we clear those out of the way, then we're much more able to connect with trust from the inside and one of the ways that we can do this is to start witnessing identifying and witnessing the characters that we play so for example we might identify a character that is and we give them names mrs victim for example mm -hmm. you know, and we can watch that for a week and notice how many times we fall into the victim character of how things are not working for us and not going our way and how we're not supported and avoidance of criticism all of these things and through the very act of witnessing we actually start to detach or not be so attached to that particular character and we attach more to the witnesser within us and when we're attached to the not attached but when we're connected with 
the witnesser, the mindful, compassionate, kind witnesser. That is the place where trust comes in. It flows in automatically, really. And the more we do that, so we can identify another character and another character, you know, then these start to get exposed. And, that, and once they're exposed, we can't take them seriously anymore. They dissolve. <laughs> and we start to really then live in this place of trust. Trust is from the heart, and the characters are mostly from the mind. The, you know, the ah. So the more we connect with our heart, the better. Beautiful. Well, and as you were speaking, the vision that came to me was just bubbling, like a bubbling of trust and joy and happiness that's just naturally being developed as we allow for the dissolving of some of these characters that we play. So it's funny because you use the word chameleon. I use the word pretzel. Uh, in, in, my, in my own journey, I witnessed that I have spent many years pretzeling myself. In other words, like putting myself into this weird, funny shape that maybe somebody will like me if I look like this kind of thing, you know, <laughs> and I call it pretzeling. So I think that's something that is a big challenge for a lot of people is the masks and the characters and the pretzeling or the chameleoning. And most everyone, you know, who does that, it's definitely as a result of some kind of traumatic, it's like a response to some kind of traumatic experience. So, And the problem is when they become identified with that so much that they don't recognize that there's something beyond that. Yeah, exactly. Stepping beyond it. Exactly. And so my, my question for you is when stepping beyond the characters, you know, when, you know, being in the witness mode, watching them dissolve, the way I perceive it, at least, when you have spent your whole life literally psychically protecting yourself and all of your energy and power is into the creation of and the attachment to all of these characters or identities, and then they start to dissolve, there is a void. And so can you talk about you know, what happens from that space? Maybe talk a little bit about you know, really using our creative power to create an experience that is without all of those masks. Can you talk a little bit about how we can tap into this now fertile void, right? Yeah. In a journey work that I do, one of the sessions involves stepping through layers of emotion, usually starting with something like anger, frustration, you know, and, and then they usually get more kind of desperate as you go further, you know, so you're desperate, hopeless, abandoned. And then when you, when you finish going through those, you reach a place which we call the void. Mm. And this void is, for many people, it's experienced as like a blackness or a numbness or a feeling of, I don't know, I don't know. And then the client is encouraged to just sit in that void not try to run away from it, not try to change it to something else, not to run back up to fear, <laughs> but to sit with this and hold it, with this witnessing, this compassionate witnessing. And what happens if you stay with it long enough, what starts to rise up through the void is what I call the higher essences. So people will start to experience peace, infinite love, bliss, pure joy, you know, and they'll experience that not as something in the mind, but as an experiential truth of their being. And for me, this is, you know, the most amazing transformation that can go on. And then we can use that truth of ourselves, that knowing of who we truly are, to start washing through these other layers. We go back up and wash through the layers one by one with messages and all of that kind of thing. So, you know, this is something that people can do. I think it takes maybe somebody to help them with the focus of that because that's quite an intense um, focusing experience. But I think you could probably slow that down and do it maybe little by little in little tastes of the void. And mm. but remembering to open to this nothingness, this blackness, and being face-to-face -face with it rather than trying to avoid it or, or cover it up. Yeah, and so the other thing that I'm hearing in that, Joy, is once we give ourselves permission to hold like hold the space and hold the experience of the void, 
then what naturally emerges is the creative energy comes through us now. Instead of us actually, you know, creating these false personas, the authentic creative energy simply bubbles up through us. Am I hearing that correctly? Yes, we just allow, we allow the expression. Beautiful. All right. Well, we've only got about a minute left. So I'd love to see if you have anything else that you would like to say to our wickedly smart women all over the world, either about your work or about anything else that we've talked about today. Yeah, I think one of the places maybe to start when when you you want to move forward into this kind of awareness uh, of being and and connecting with your true self might be to notice when you're getting triggered emotionally it's great to spot these times you know if you're uh, you know in, in the corporate environment your boss is kind of being a bit of a bully and and you're feeling victimized for example then you can tune into what is this um, victimization what does it feel like you know when have I felt like this before and really just to surround it with compassion and say it's okay it's allowed to feel like this and in that allowing instead of going into the mind talk of you know oh you're so stupid you shouldn't be feeling like a victim you should be able to get out of this by now all of that kind of thing (laughs) you just surround it with love you know and just ask what else is possible or what next you know and this can move you really into something completely different and the next time your boss starts to you know come out with bullying behavior you can let it go straight past over your shoulder (laughs) say something like interesting point of view you have there it's not my point of view (laughs) you know you automatically come up with without trying um, the right kind of words or the right kind of behavior that feels good to you that feels right that feels light Mm, beautiful all right feels right feels light well thank you so much joy it's been a real pleasure to have you and i want to remind everyone you can find out more about joy at transformation let me see i wrote it down here can you tell us again joy i i moved my piece of paper (laughs) (laughs) truly transformational dot c o dot uk and if anybody wants to actually have a free gift from me i have they go to truly transformational dot co.uk forward slash emotional dash triggers. Oh, beautiful. Webinar, which will help them to understand how to really manage that and then start to work on themselves from that place. Beautiful. Well, we will make sure we put that in the show notes. Thank you so much for that generous gift, Joy. I really appreciate that for our listeners. And thank you again for being here with me today. So listeners, we love feedback. Please let us know what you thought of today's show or send in questions or guest suggestions to listeners at wickedlysmartwomen.com. We might even give you a shout out on the show. Thanks for tuning in. Keep your ears open. And remember, you are wonderful women. Thanks for tuning in, downloading, and listening. Be sure to review and rate Wickedly Smart Women on Apple Podcasts and share with other women who can benefit from today's episode. Wickedly Smart Women is the premier podcast series for informing, activating, and inspiring the leader who carries profound wisdom and knows that now is the time to welcome wealth. We welcome your feedback and guest suggestions and invite you to subscribe to our mailing list to be notified of each episode at wickedlysmartwomen.com.